digitize and monetize with iEnt Live, the only platform that provides complete digital support for entertainers, promoters, businesses, and entrepreneurs. Leverage our one-stop digital ecosystem that will allow you to promote your music, sell albums, and host paid events, host webinars and sell courses, promote your concerts, sell tickets, and live stream events, and market your business or project to generate new customer leads, traffic, and more. This is all supported by our homegrown AI-driven digital marketing infrastructure that has successfully served hundreds of clients around the world. To learn more, send us a message or call 765-4641. Hi, good evening, and welcome to Bloodline Podcast on Iron Live. My guest this evening is Trinidad-born, Miami-based comedian, Cindy Ann Wazo. Welcome, Cindy Ann. Hi, Peter. Thank you for having me. The pleasure is all mine. So, Cindy Ann, tell me something about your, your origins um, and family life. Where were you born? Where you grew up, family life. Yeah, um, originally born in Maraval Village. Well, I guess Port of Spain in general, you know, just to keep it yeah. real. Uh, but grew up in Maraval Village. My both parents are from Paramin Village. Mm -hmm. And so I spent most of my childhood days in Paramin with all my cousins because it was just my brother and I. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I had fun because it was so many of us. I come from a very big family. I had like 51 first cousins. Wow. So it was, yeah. And we were all kind of in the same place because both parents from Parman. Mm. My mother's two sisters got married to my dad's two brothers. So <laughs> three sisters <laughs> married, three brothers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, so that was it. Um, Marval Village, Parman Village, just having fun. And what about schooling and hobbies and stuff like that? I went to St. Rose's Girls RC. Mm -hmm. And one of my hobbies um, was standing on a particular spot in the girls' school so that the boys could see us. That was my Rosary kid. Boys. Because St. Rose's Girls and Rosary Boys, they're very close. Yeah. So the girls, there was a particular spot in the girls' school there where we, if we stood there, the boys would see us clear as day. <laughs> so that you, was one of me. You, um, were, you were naughty from childhood? From, from small, very, very mischievous. <laughs> um, I always loved to play and laugh. And mm. I guess, like I said, it was mostly, the cousins around my age were mostly boys. Mm. So that I would do a lot of like rounders. I had neighbors and we play rounders and pitch. And that was my childhood, mostly outdoors. Mm. But we weren't allowed, girls weren't allowed to climb the trees because we were told if we did that, the fruits would be sour. <laughs> so we weren't allowed to <laughs> climb <laughs> any trees, but we could do anything, almost anything else. That the boys could do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how you got started in the arts? And who are some of your mentors? Um, how I got started? When I left, I went to St. Francois, and I always had a passion for storytelling. Not mm. in a formal setting, but like in my classroom with my friends, if we were liming anywhere, I would take center stage. Because my life is, is, is comedy. I guess it just happened that way. Mm -hmm. I always had a story to tell. So I would mm. hold audience, and we would have fun. Mm. And back then... I wasn't involved in drama and stuff, I guess, because that wasn't something you could tell your parents, at least not my mom, <laughs> that I wanted to drop. Like, are you out of your goddamn mind? <laughs> mm. She wanted me to teach. My dad was a teacher and my mom was a mental health care nurse. Mm. So, um, and she, the hospital found who? She didn't go there because she was a little crazy too. Um, <laughs> so I always liked storytelling. And I remember when Errol, Fabian, and Nigel used to do the courts ad right. as a twin. Yeah. Um, my sister friend and I, a friend of mine called Joanne, who went to school with me, we kind of looked alike. Mm. And 
we would see them and beg them to bring us in. Like, listen, a twin boy and a twin girl, we could make this happen. And yeah. they would just laugh. And then one day, um, Errol reached out to me. Uh, well, I knew Errol as a friend, you know, just chatting, saying hi. And then yeah. he contacted me to do some stuff with him on 105 Mix Nuts. Mm -hmm. And I would say that was my first time really getting into it. Mm -hmm. He kind of threw me to the world too, because I had no script, I had nothing. And he was just like, this is what I need you to do, pop, pop, pop. Mm. And, and I did it. I loved it. And then I did a play with Errol, Sprang Along and Wendell Etienne. Mm. That would have been 2009, I think, called A Man in My Bedroom. Mm. I was the only <laughs> female lead female. <laughs> And it was such a good experience to be with, I mean, Errol Fabian sprung along and Wendell Etienne. I mean, you couldn't ask for better. Right. And yeah. I learned so much. And I remember after that play, saying to Wendell, I want to do stand-up comedy. And mm. he was like, well, let's do it. Mm. And I was migrating to the States mm. like a few months later. And I said, well, maybe when I get back, we'll start. Mm. Um, and then I got here and life happened. Mm. And I did a stand up comedy course at the Hollywood Improv. Mm -hmm. And that was it. If you had to choose like an alternative career, what do you think you might have choose? Now, teaching. I should have listened to my mom because before comedy, I did, I was an administrative assistant for years. Mm. I did accounting, um, HR, executive assistant before mm. comedy. Mm -hmm. and, and I liked it because I had the opportunity to dress. I always liked dressing. And so I didn't think being a teacher would uh, allow me the opportunity. Teachers to me back then were frumpy and kind. I was like, I'm not doing that. Sitting yeah. in a hot class with no, you know what I mean? Frumpy, yeah. Yeah. cotton dress. No, thank you. Now that has changed. Teachers dress up. I would teach kids. I would go into child psychology mm -hmm. and, and deal with children. I love children. Right. Um, tell me something. So you're a comedian. You're performing now in, in Miami, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, all right? And the audience loves you. I saw you perform at the local theater and it was downright hilarious. But tell me something. What do you do? If the audience doesn't laugh at some jokes you bring. Um <laughs> now I yeah. I could deal with it. Like mm -hmm. I'm I'm okay with the silence. At the mm -hmm. beginning I would cut my set short <laughs> and just exit the stage because I was like, Oh my god, this didn't work. Yeah. Um now I can say I can say stuff like, All right, maybe you guys don't like jokes about Whatever yeah. it is, they didn't laugh about. I'll say, all right, you guys not feeling this joke, fine. Mm. I, I thought it was hilarious, but I guess it didn't work. Yeah. And I would move on. I'm able to kind of switch it up a bit. Your audiences in the States, are they more like um, West Indian audiences or the mix or you get a lot of Americans laughing as well? Mostly Americans. Um, mostly Americans. Mostly Americans. Yeah, very rare I perform. I produce my own shows too, and that's that's the only time really that I have a Caribbean audience. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, it's predominantly Americans or Hispanics. Okay. Um, but mostly Americans. Okay. Um, what was your most embarrassing stage moment? What was my... Well, to be very honest, Peter, <laughs> I'm not easily embarrassed, so I'm trying to think... <laughs> If I had to choose one, yeah. at the very beginning, mm. I, there's a joke I do about how Americans love animals, right? And I went to this venue for the first time. I was just starting mm. up. Mm. And I spoke about dogs. And I said, you know, <laughs> the audience, we don't love dogs more than is necessary. I said, mm -hmm. I mean, we bathe it, we feed it, but you guys want to kiss your dog in your mouth. And, I, and mm. this lady said... Um, I love my dog and I think you should just shut up. Mm. Like, okay. Um, <laughs> at that point, like I said, I had just gotten started. I was, so I just ended my set. I said, oh, okay. And I just walked off the stage and I just felt like, oh my God, I, I, mm. I didn't know what to say. Um, mm. But that would be it. I can't think of, of one. 
I'm not that easily embarrassed. You have to come <laughs> real good. Embarrassing. <laughs> real good. Tell me, how, how, how you succeed with the balancing act between being a wife, a mother, and a performer? I like that you assume that I'm, I'm successful at it because I'm not. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> I like the assumption. I like the assumption. It's good. <laughs> Well, being a mom, my son is 26 years old, so mm. he's on his own, mm. he's doing his thing. I think mm. I, I mm. equipped him with the right tools that he, he lives in New York, mm. he does his stuff, and um, we have a very good relationship. So we talk ever so often, he supports me, and you know, I'm not, I'm not as hands-on that I, I, I don't need to be anymore, mm. so that that allows me to do me. Mm -hmm. And my husband, too, the truth is, I haven't seen him in so long. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and it's not that he's not around. It's just that I don't, I, I stop looking at him. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he's supportive. He is very supportive. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I honestly... All my life, I've taken care of my son. I've taken mm. care of everything else around me. Mm. And I'm at that point of my life now where it's, it's my time. Okay, enjoy it. It's my time. I'm taking full okay. advantage. But I do have the support. I really okay. do. I'm glad to hear this. But now it's your time to uh, do some Q&A with me on blood pressure. That's my right. real section here. Let's go. You ready? Let's go. So question number one. Tiramisu or red velvet cake? Red velvet. Sushi or dim sum? Ah, um. Mm. Mm, okay, sushi. Sushi. Polori or doubles? Jeez, and ages. Come on, man. Uh. Polori or doubles? Um, that's... Can I dip the polori in the double sauce? <laughs> that would be ideal. I could do that. Um, oh my God, that's tough. Mm -hmm. All right, doubles, doubles. All right. KFC or Popeyes? Can I say neither or I have to choose one? I have to choose one? Yeah, not necessarily. If neither is neither. Mm -mm. Not Royal Castle. <laughs> Fish and chips. <laughs> that's, that's my girl. <laughs> Winter or summer? Summer. Summer. Reading or TV? Reading. David Rudder or Marshall Montano? Ah, geez, on ages. What happened? David Montano. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough. Um, Ah, uh, oh yes, my God! Let me see. Love them both. You love them both I love them both for different reasons. They bring different things to the table. I know. That's why I ask you. I know. Um, if I had to choose, who watches this show more, David or Marshall? I'll choose you. <laughs> <laughs> You'd rather choose one, really. You know, you love them both. I love and them both. It will be dramatic tonight. Okay. Yeah. All right. Christmas or carnival. Carnival. That one you had to choose one. Carnival for sure, for sure, for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. Parang or soca? You know, I like parang. Mm -hmm. Actually, well, par 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 you have to like parang. And I actually, I don't know if you've ever heard of, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's called Quesh or Cresh. Cresh, yeah. It's a French. You know, French, the French thing to. Uh, parang. Yeah, mm hmm. That to me is, I love that. As a pity, we don't play it as much as we used to. Yeah, it's a beautiful music. It's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, That's it's French. It's French um, influence. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. grew up listening to that. I love mm. that music. Um. Okay. Last question. Let me see how your blood pressure going. Uh huh. Chris Rock or Kevin Hart? Chris Rock for sure. Chris Rock. Yeah, well, you have passed the blood pressure test. Good, because my I suffer with low blood pressure, so I needed this. Right, 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 right. Facts and win is the newest NLCB promotion. 
To participate, you must be 18 years and over. Be in possession of a valid Trinidad and Tobago vaccination card and have received one dose of a full WHO approved COVID-19 vaccine during the promotion period, August 18th to September 14th, 2021. 100 weekly winners will receive $5,000 each and the grand prize is $50,000. Stay hydrated with Caribbean spring water, natural and alkaline spring water from the northern range of Trinidad, of course. Cindy. Yes. Yes, my dear. Back yes. to you. Yes, my dear. What do you miss most about Trinidad and Tobago? Oh, Peter. Mm -hmm. You get me a little emotional because it's well, been almost two years. Emotional, darling. I love and miss the sincerity mm -hmm. of our people. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something that I I think I took for granted when I was living home. Mm -hmm. People talk a lot about and they compare customer service. Like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, customer service, home stings and, mm -hmm. and, and whatever. Yeah. But the mm -hmm. truth is we're not driven by by money so that the customer service to me home is real life you're dealing with real people with real issues and mm. um and i miss that i miss somebody saying to me i go to a restaurant and i order something and somebody say oh god girl that don't <laughs> taste good now because <laughs> it's it's a genuine sincerity yes. and and i i miss well of course i miss my my friends and my family and just that sincerity of heart mm -hmm. uh, if i could just say this years ago i cannot remember who wrote it mm -hmm. but i read an article back home it was a lady who migrated to trinidad from canada mm -hmm. and she had she there was a sentence and she said service without heart is greatly overrated and that stayed with me and i read that maybe 20 years ago eh? Mm -hmm. service without heart is greatly overrated and yeah. i stand by that yeah we have a lot of heart home we we it's it's a beauty that i i miss that the most mm -hmm. um what advice would you have for a young artist who wants to have a career in the arts in the united states how difficult is it or how easy it is it's not easy at all. It's, okay. It's well, what, advice, what advice do you have for them, a young person? Um, first of all, commit. Mm -hmm. Commit to, to who you are. Be honest and be yourself and be true and commit to that. Because eventually people have no choice but to buy into that. Mm -hmm. Be prepared to work hard. Believe in yourself because mm -hmm. there were a lot of naysayers when I started. Mm -hmm. saying I shouldn't do this I can't do that um, and I had to just keep plowing through mm -hmm. be true to yourself commit and and work hard and just keep just keep going keep focused and and I think that's that's what it is and be kind to people mm -hmm. be kind to people um, well I'm reading and I'm seeing that um, the COVID pandemic it's doing quite a toll on the United States, especially um, Miami and Florida. Um, how, 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 are you, how are you dealing? How have you been dealing with it? Like, you know, performing and the vaccinated versus the anti-vax posse. I know. Mm -hmm. I have to say at the beginning, this the whole thing took a toll on my mental health. Like, mm -hmm. I struggled because comedy is my life, and I wasn't able to perform for, like, seven months. Like, nothing. Mm -hmm. I did a couple of Zoom shows, but nothing like live mm -hmm. in person energy. Mm -hmm. And we started back, and we've been going well. Mm -hmm. I got vaccinated back in June, I think, May mm -hmm. or June. And we've been doing pretty good. There are quite a few venues who take all the precautions. Mm -hmm. They sanitize the mic. There's something called a mic condom that you put. It's like a shower cap. Mm -hmm. And you put it on the mic. So some venues give that. I have my own spray that I walk with. So I spray the mic, my alcohol spray. 
Mm-hmm. And for the most part, I think the comedians themselves, we respect each other so that we know to stay away and and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's easy when you're in the back, you're in the green room, you're not really in the, in the audience where you have to, you know what I mean, socialize and, and, and yeah. talk, mm-hmm. get too close. Mm-hmm. So it's been it's been challenging, but mm-hmm. we were doing very well at some point. And now with this new variant, people are now staying away a little more, and we, and we're seeing the pushback. Yeah. Um, I say to me, you can't fight the data. The information is there. Mm-hmm. Um, I ask people, please, to do your own, you know, your own due diligence and stop with the forwards and and really just sit and think for a minute about how we can get out of this. Um, I made the choice because of my career and I want to travel and I want to come home mm-hmm. and I want to see family and yeah. think of your why, why you want this to be over and for whom and, and, and let's make the right choice so that we could get back on track. But um, as a comedian, right, does any part of your new routine have any, much, because COVID is not funny, right? Right. But at least something in your routine advising people on what they should do and what they shouldn't do and the restrictions and the protocols and stuff like that you know no 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 Uh -uh, i don't know um but i'll i just want to say this because you said covid isn't funny Hmm. and people get very caught up in what should be funny and what should be not as a comedian Hmm. i i believe everything is funny it can be funny (laughs) Yes, everything, everything from mental health to whatever, whatever can be funny. So COVID is funny because there are funny things to be said about it. Like when it started, I was happy that people were avoiding me. Like I was like, this is amazing. I felt like I was always some sort of queen. People would see you and I just go walk around. I'm like, this is amazing. Mm. I could live my life like this. (laughs) Um, But no, I don't get, I don't touch on it at all. It's so... Mm -hmm. Everybody's doing it, you know, so I, it's just not my thing. Okay. Um, tell me something. What is the potential for Caribbean comedy on the world stage? Is there a space for it? Uh, uh, oh, how much yeah. time we have? How much time we have, boy? We have, we have, we have time? Let's talk. talk um, I think, I'll tell you my experience when I came home to do my very first show. You were there. Mm. Um when I described the format of the show, I got so much flack and so much, mm. oh, you can't do that. You can't have a show without intermission. Cindy Ann, people need intermission. I'm like, no, they don't. Mm. I'm not having an intermission. There's mm. no intermission. Mm. Uh, when I said I would time people, because here you get a light telling you, okay, time to wrap it up. You can't, but if a man telling a joke, we will stop him. I'm like, yeah, pretty much. Mm. He has to get off the stage. You know, his yeah. time is up. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm working on a on a thing, and oh my God, I got so much flack and criticism and pushback. Um, I think we have to, because we're so funny and so talented. Mm-hmm. I haven't yet figured it out quite mm-hmm. yet why we have not been able to advance on the world stage. Um, I think it has part to do with discipline. And I know people might be like, blah, 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 blah. but it's true. Um, mm. We are very spoiled. And I, and I don't say it in a bad way. And you realize I said we, myself included. Mm. In order for me to succeed, Peter, I had to change the way I, I, oper- I thought of myself and mm. the whole scene. Because it's, sometimes you perform in a dive bar, two drunk men cuss in, a fight break out. Mm. And when I started comedy and I would go, I would think, okay, this is below me. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> this. Right. Mm. I had to realize in order for me to get to that next level, mm-hmm. I had to kind of come down, you know, and be like. Assimilate. Right. assimilate. That's right. And I think we are so spoiled home and so entitled. And, and I see it. In the truest way and in the best, we are. Yeah. We're very spoiled. And so, yeah. So I think it has to do with that. That we get here and we realize, wait a minute. You want me to drive an hour for 10 US dollars? Are you out of your goddamn mind? Yeah. That's what I do sometimes. I'm not in. Imba- that's sometimes, yeah. Sometimes I drive 
for zero dollars. You see me sometimes performing yeah. for a drink at a bar. Wow. That's what it takes to get where you need to get. People don't see that. And and they see everything that, that glitters, they assume is gold. Mm-hmm. But it's not. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of perseverance and commitment. And a lot of understanding that it doesn't mean that you're less or more of a person. It just means that this is what it's going to take to get you where you would like and hope to go. Yeah. Um, who's the funniest comedian that you know? You you know, somebody who really. Um, in terms of somebody professional or just anyone. Anyone and professional. Professionally, for me, Patrice O'Neill was someone who I have looked at his special. I don't know, maybe a hundred times. Yeah. Um. Of course, I love Dave Chappelle and Bill Burr. Outside of that, my friend Joanne is, I mean, she's the one person I can call, and without saying too much, she's hilarious. And I have a few cousins in Paramin who are so talented. Um, (laughs) My cousin Delano can take the stage at any time Mm -hmm. and, and just keep a whole big group so entertained. He's very, very funny. Right. <laughs> um, well, so what about people like Chris Rock, Kevin Hart, um, those people? I love them. I love Chris Rock. Um, I love Kevin Hart's energy. Yeah. Chris Rock, I love um, the way he structures his jokes. I like Wanda Sykes. I mean, I could list. Yeah, a whole lot of people. Oh, yeah. my God. There's so many people for so many different reasons. Like Wanda Sykes to me writes beautifully. When I listen to her and I... I watch the flow of her jokes and her structures and her punchlines and her act outs. I'm just like in awe um, of of how she of her craft, you know. So I recently got the opportunity to see Dave Chappelle live, and people were like, "How was it?" I'm like, "I have no clue. I was so enamored by this man. I didn't hear a thing he said. I was sitting looking at him like this. Yeah. After the show, and I thought, I don't remember anything he said." Um, yeah so i just love watching comedians and because especially now that i'm in it yeah. and i know what it takes so i love seeing how they can take one thing and bleed it like you can talk about a microphone for 20 minutes if you know you know oh. what i mean so they, that's what they tell you. Take something and just rinse it out until yeah. there is nothing else left. Yeah. It's such a beautiful art form that yeah. I love it so much because um, you have to be true and vulnerable and just raw and real to let people connect. And I had to learn that over time Yeah. because coming from the Caribbean, you know, you don't want people in your business. You don't want to say this. You don't want to say that. But you have to. I've learned that you have to. How many years now you've been doing this? Six years. October will be September will be six years. That's six years? Six years. You look like longer than that. I know. Well I've been a clung all my life, if that's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> but professionally, September will be six years. Cindy, I think you're doing a remarkable job. Oh, thank you. You know, just continue keeping Trinidad and Tobago on that comedy stage, you know. Um, it, it would be nice to have you back home to do a show, a big show with Trinidad, you know. Yeah. Maybe somebody, you know, guys here who still around, because we yeah. lost a long way, you know. I know, quite um, a few, quite yeah. a few. And I always try to, well, you've been to my shows. I always try to, I bring someone from here, mm-hmm, and yeah. then I include Luke a lot. Like I've had Errol on the show, I've had yeah. Peter Kelly. The last one, I thought the last one was real good. Yeah, which one were you, were you at the last one? Little Carib Theatre. You Little couldn't Carib. make the Central Bank was my last show. I was at Central Bank. No, you could I, come. I couldn't come. Okay, okay, I can't remember now. I don't think you came, but Central Bank was the last. I think I was there. Okay. Central uh, Bank was the last one. Yeah, just two more questions after you. Okay. What has COVID-19 taught you most about yourself? Um, 
most about myself, COVID-19. It has taught me that I'm okay with my with my own company and mm. I have I have so much mental health issues. <laughs> <laughs> COVID-19 taught me that I am okay with being by myself, that I'm I'm fine in my own space mm-hmm. uh, by myself. Just mm-hmm. um, it has taught me to to be honest with my with my feelings for the people whom I love. That yeah. that it's let people know how you feel about them now. Because sometimes we want to say something, but you're you know, you don't want to deal with the aftermath of it or whatever. Yeah. It it really pushed me to to look because I spent so much time by myself to look within and and deal with some of my demons. Not some of them I couldn't even catch. <laughs> They're so quick. Um, but yeah. the thing is, yeah, yeah, fast demons. They are fast moving demons. Yeah, boy. Some of them quick. Um, <laughs> By the time I realized, I was like, oh, I should have gotten that one before it left. Yeah. But um, yeah, it has it has taught me that I too have so much work to do on myself and mm. have so much, apart from work to do on myself, so much to give to so many people who are not as fortunate as I am. So um, what's in your future for Cindy? Um, when is your next show? I have a show tonight. You're kidding. Um, I was la- we, we're doing a ladies' night show tonight, a group, myself and some real, can I say badass? I can say yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some badass <laughs> female <laughs> comics tonight. We're doing a ladies' night. And okay. then I have a show on Friday. Okay. Um, my hope and my goal is to get into a few comedy festivals because that's mm-hmm. when you get, you know, you start networking and, and you get different eyes on you. Um, yeah. I actually got accepted to my first festival, but it was p- postponed because of COVID. COVID, yeah. Yeah. So like, in the future for me, for me is to do a show at home where I can give back. Um, shoot, whether it's my special, I want to do a special and I want to do it at home. Yeah. And one day just kind of, I guess, open doors for the younger comics yeah. you know yeah. just anybody looking on and and they need advice or they need any sort of assistance yeah. i would love to i would love to help in any way i can but the future for me is to make it on the world stage peter to get a netflix special uh, uh yeah. where i could stand and say most times i open with a trini song and yeah. and i always say i'm from trinidad and tobago yeah. and i'm so proud of who we are and so proud of I just want people to, to know who we are and come home. So yeah. that's what's in this future for me. Okay, my dear. Well, it's been nice seeing you and talking to you after, what, over two years? Over two years. Yes. Almost. Yeah, it's been over two years. I haven't seen you. The last time I was yeah. home, I, just, I saw you. Yeah. yeah. So thank you so much for being my guest this evening. Thank you for having me. I wish you all the best. I always tell you that. I'm like... Yeah. I can't believe how you've just grown in a different direction. To me, I'm, oh Lord, I love it. And I wish you continued success. Okay, my darling. Thank Always. you very much. Bye. Thanks for having me, okay, Peter. Love. Bye-bye. Bye. My guest this evening was a comedian, Miami-based Trinidadian comedian, Sindian Boasso. And you have been looking at Bloodline Podcast on Iron Live. Sponsored by NLCB. Ciao. Good evening. Digitize and monetize with iEnt Live, the only platform that provides complete digital support for entertainers, promoters, businesses, and entrepreneurs. Leverage our one-stop digital ecosystem that will allow you to promote your music, sell albums, and host paid events, host webinars and sell courses, promote your concerts, sell tickets, and live stream events, and market your business or project to generate new customer leads, traffic, and more. This is all supported by our homegrown AI-driven digital marketing infrastructure that has successfully served hundreds of clients around the world. To learn more, send us a message or call 765-4641. 